Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, God put it on my heart to redo this video. I'd made some mistakes that I thought I could do a correction video, and I was doing a word study trying to get some other videos out, and I came across a verse where it talks about, For the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity and practice hypocrisy, and to utter error against the Lord. And when I read that, and trying to do the study and everything, it just started really getting to my heart saying, hey, you, you made a mistake a lot. You, you said uh, Jesus is Lord, and you said Jesus is coming to flesh, and you left words out. And a main part that was eating at me also, brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't want to fool babes in Christ. I want to do right by the body of Christ, but most importantly, I want to respect God and do what's right by Him. And one of the big parts of this ministry is words have meaning and when the word is left out it can change the whole passage it can change the meaning of everything so I decided to redo this so I can honor God and do right by my brethren so can a false convert say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh or Jesus is the Lord okay that's the title I even got the title messed up when I was doing the video so if you've already seen the study, um, the only thing I'm adding new real quick is why it's so important I had to redo this study. Okay. First let's read uh, 1 John 4, 1 through 6. Okay. Uh, 1 John 1 through 4. I didn't write down. Um, all the way to 6. So now I've got to finagle. Uh, 1 John 4, 1 through 6. Okay. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. The whole point of this study is, is to show that can someone lie and say they believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, or say Jesus is the Lord. The two words that I left out that are so important is the word the, for the Lord, and Christ, for Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And I said it right, but then I'd say it wrong, and I just don't want to confuse people. Okay? The whole point of this is, can someone who's lost make these statements? Okay? We got so wrapped up in the, in the challenge, uh, and I got into with some people where it's like, uh, it's supposed to be about us. It's not really about the people who are lost and fakes and frauds. I felt like the video, the first thing I did was reflect on myself. You know, am I saying it right? And I turned around and started saying it wrong. I said it right, then I'd say it wrong. So it's supposed to be a reflection on us first. Uh, judgment must first begin at the house of God. Okay, we're supposed to judge ourselves first, then our brethren. And I had brothers in Christ that did it with love. Uh, that corrected me on what was going on. They did it with grace. Uh, charity is the best word. Uh, with charity. So, um, that's what this is about. Okay. We're supposed to judge. Spiritual judgments. Verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. It's a capital S, Spirit of God. means you have the Holy Spirit in you. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Jesus Christ. Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. A lot of our studies, we've been preaching and teaching a Jesus or the Jesus. Okay? A lot of the world, a majority, most, almost half the world, uh, believes in a Jesus. They believe in Jesus that is that is Lord, lowercase l, Lord. That's why the word thee is so important. Uh, someone referred me to one of Brother Brian's old videos and I went back and watched it and it was very convicting. Um, you can't say Jesus is Lord, it has to be Jesus is the Lord. The Lord is singular and it makes that L a capital L. It's not about what's in writing, it's about your talking and what you teach and what you believe and what you live for. Okay. The Lord is important. And we keep talking about how the Antichrist spirit is already in the world. Over half the world believes in 
a Jesus Christ who is Lord, lowercase l, Lord. Uh, they believe in a Jesus Christ who has come in the flesh. A Jesus who is a Lord, not the Lord. And, and that's what's going on here. Verse 4, Ye are God, little children, and have be overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who's the lowercase g God of this world? Satan. Satan is a counterfeit. He's trying to counterfeit Jesus. That's why it's the Antichrist. The Antichrist spirit is already in the world today. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world. All these false teachers, because that's what I was asked. I was giving, an email was get sent to me by a brother in Christ saying, I don't get it. I've seen these false teachers say this, and yet they teach what's called damnable heresies, doctrines of devils. And how can they say this? Okay. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world. They might say this, but what are they really confessing with their teachings? Mm -hmm. They can say one thing and lie to you, as we're going to find out, but then they're going to show their true colors. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And by what they teach, that's their true confession, what they stand for, how they live their life. Mm -hmm. And the world heareth them, okay, someone who's very popular. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. This is the test, part of the test. He that heareth, um, he that, I gotta say it right. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. When we try to preach truth, is the Holy Spirit in uh, them bearing witness with our Holy Spirit? Are we of one mind? Or are they fighting absolute truth? We see a lot of fighting more than anything. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of verses. Make sure you have your King James Bible out and you're following along. Okay. I last time I did the video it got dark last minute. We're gonna take our time not going to be in a hurry. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh versus Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And we have Jesus is the Lord, which is correct, versus Jesus is Lord, which I kept screwing up on. Okay. So, we have uh, 1 John, we just did that one, 1 Corinthians 12, 3 real quick. Jesus is the Lord. 1 Corinthians 12, 3, if you want to turn there. Remember, you can pause the video in between each verses, which is what I recommend, because it's what I always do when I watch other brothers in Christ do study videos. Uh, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God, capital S, in other words, you have the Holy Spirit. That's evidence. The Holy Spirit comes in, changes your life. That's the evidence. The physical change proves that you have the Holy Spirit in you. Okay? So that's why anytime it says capital S, Spirit of God that you're speaking by it, or that you have it, is because it's talking about a saved person. Okay. No man speaking by the Holy Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And people have said, well, I've seen people that teach, you know, false gospels. And we're going to get into that. All these, the major doctrines that we've always said, and I'm going to link them, why are they a salvation issue? We always say that. And why these people are teaching uh, doctrines of devils, damnable heresies, but they'll say that Jesus is the Lord. Oftentimes they might slip up like I did and they still teach right, but a lot of times they probably say Jesus is Lord and they're teaching all these damnable heresies, doctrines of devils. So the whole point of this is to show uh, through Scripture what I believe, through Scripture, why these people can say it, but then they turn around and they're confessing the opposite with their stands, with what they preach. Okay, the truth will co uh, uh, the truth will come to light. You know, light shines on the darkness. Okay. So, we're gonna go with salvation when Jesus was walking on the earth. The parts of salvation. Please bear with me. Repentance, belief, confession, evidence. Okay. Matthew 3 1. If you want to turn to Matthew 3 1. I read this and we've talked about it in other 
um, studies, I love the Lord. When we do studies, we're going to go through verses what we've gone through before. Okay, It's good to go over the same verses over and over. Okay, Get them in your heart. Okay. Matthew 3, 1, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There we have our belief. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Once again, that's the belief. That's the uh, prophet Isaiah prophet, uh, prophesied. Okay? The, we call it the millennial kingdom, but it's the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. They're king. They're to believe that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and that Jesus is their Lord and their king. Okay. The way of the Lord. That their king is coming. So that's the belief. And the same John had his raiments of camel hair and a leather girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So we've got belief, and we've got confessing. Okay. Keep going. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. We've got repentance. What's fruits meet? That's the evidence. So as we read here, we have repentance in here, belief in here, confess, and there's got to be evidence. Fruit, uh, fruits meet that you repented. Okay. Why are we going over the gospel? The whole point of the challenge that Brother Brian did, like I said, you need to reflect on your heart first. Okay, am I saying it right? Do I, am I understanding what's really going on here? Okay. It's a salvation issue. That's why the Bible, uh, 1 John says, um, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. In other words, someone who's truly saved versus someone who's lost. Victoria's digging over there. Stop it. That's why, um, Victoria's my dog if you don't know. That is why I'm going over the Gospels real quick to show you that you have four parts in here. Okay. Stop it. The ground here has got a lot of spikes on it. We're going over the gospel because it's a salvation issue is what it is. So we see all four parts in there. Ephesians 2, 7 is where we're going to be going next. Okay, And people attack this. They attack repentance that leads to belief. Because if you repent, I did a study, um, Salvation for Lost Sinners, Part 2, Belief. Just belief, yeah, part two, belief, and that's where we are. I haven't gone to the next one yet, but I, I teach in that study and prove the Bible that if you skip repentance, you're not capable of believing in the real Jesus Christ. That's what it means by repentance leads to belief, godly sorrow for sinning against Him. In this context, okay, repentance towards God, then you have your belief, faith in Jesus Christ. There's confession, you confess both in prayer. Each one leads to the other. You ask God to save you, and He looks at the heart. And when you ask God to save you, it's proving that it's a gift. And that's what we're going to get to real quick. Okay? It's a gift. But there's evidence. You know, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. There's supposed to be evidence that repentance and belief happened. But first, you go back to the very first step, that repentance happens. Fruits meet for repentance. That's the easiest way is to go back to that because if that didn't happen, their belief is in vain because they're not believing in the real Jesus Christ and oftentimes they won't confess it. They say that's a work and you don't, they're saying now you don't ask God to save you. You just take salvation. You've earned it with your faith. But let's read Ephesians 2, 7. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus for by grace are ye saved through faith. Remember that word, through. It's a key word, through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus 
unto, there's the next word we're going to be talking about, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Like I said, the reason we are going over salvation is it says, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Um, came across another guy that's attacking the true gospel. I got onto him way back in a video about, uh, they always kept saying faith alone, faith alone, faith alone. You won't find faith alone in the Bible. It's not in there. Okay? Um, so I told him, I said, why don't you guys say grace alone? Because if you read there, it says, for by grace are you saved. Now remember, through faith, through there, it's a very important word. Words have meaning. Okay? But I came across this guy, and now, I, they might have been saying it before, but now this guy's saying it's um, grace alone through faith alone. And I'm like, so they can't, they just don't want to give up that faith alone. They've earned it by their faith. Um, okay, it doesn't say faith alone. It says through faith. And here's the thing. They don't like that word through. And we'll show why here in a little bit. They'll say it because they'll say through faith. See, see faith, faith alone, faith alone, faith alone. And they don't really expound on through. Because if they expound it on through the way we are going to do it, it'll prove them wrong. It's not faith, faith alone. It's through faith. Okay? And created in Christ Jesus unto good works. How do you know that, that you have God's grace and you've gone through faith? You're created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Okay? Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You're created... We're going to be doing studies in the future about in Christ Jesus. What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? Okay. So, faith is something you have to go through. Key word, through, that we talked about. Through, if you look at the um, definition, from the beginning to end, by means of. So you have a beginning where you start, and you have an end. The through is between the two. So for what we're talking about... Um, the beginning is the lost state. God's wrath is upon you. You've sinned against God, you're on your way to hell, and God's wrath is upon you. I almost said, and you deserve it. We believe that we deserve it, and I still am deserving of it, but God saved me from it. But the lost world, what is their state? Even though the ones who reject Jesus Christ, who believe in a false Jesus, what's their state? God's wrath is upon them because they've sinned against him, and they're on their way to hell. That's the, where you start at. That's the start. The finish. God's grace. You have to go through something to get God's grace. And the Bible says it's faith. Okay. So, we're going to go back over those four points again. Repentance, belief, confess. Remember what it said there in Ephesians 2 uh, verse uh, 10. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You get saved, the evidence of salvation is good works. The changed life. We're going to get to that. I'm jumping ahead a little bit. But the unto means, it means almost the same thing as uh, through, except you don't have the state that you were in. It's focusing, when it says unto or to, T-O, it's saying you're going to something. Here's the starting point, but unto to two means you're going somewhere, you're trying to find the grace. Okay? Through faith. So, let's see what the Bible says that you the unto and the two part to find God's grace. And when we see it, we understand right there it says through faith. So when it says unto salvation or to salvation, it's saying it takes faith to do this. Okay? Repentance. 2 Corinthians 7, 9. Now I rejoice not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. Okay, sorrow, godly sorrow, which we're going to get to. Sorrow, being sorry for sinning against God is what's going to lead you to repenting in your heart, saying, I've sinned against God and I'm on my way to hell. You have to have sorrow. Okay. For we were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. There's the word to. So, they like to attack it. 
these people, the, remember the whole point of this study is I'm pointing out that when you confess something, what precedes confession? Belief. What precedes belief? Repentance. Before you got saved, you didn't believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. When you were lost, you didn't believe that Jesus is the capital L Lord. You had to get saved. You had to repent of denying God, you know, your sins. But I'm talking about for the purpose we're talking about, you had to come to God and believing that He is and confessing it. And afterwards, there's supposed to be evidence of it. So what we're talking about here, there's supposed to be evidence. That's why we're going through this. I'm throwing this in here real quick because I want you guys to bear with me for this study. It's going to take a little bit. So as we see there, it takes faith to repent. How do we know that? Because the Bible says we are saved by God's grace through faith. You have to go through something to get to God's grace. It's faith. Here it said you have to go repentance to salvation. Salvation has always been God's grace. God dealing with man and saving him by his grace. That's what salvation has always been. Okay. Different dispensation, God deals with them differently. He, he dispenses his grace differently. We read in the, um, about Jesus when he was walking on the earth, what the four things were. Okay, we, we pointed it out. Is that the same belief we're supposed to have today? No. But it's still about God's grace. Remission of sins. Okay, to get pardoned, forgiven. Okay. Um, next, belief. We have belief. Let's see what the Bible says about belief. See, this one they'll jump on and say, oh yeah, we, this one's obvious. But let's read it. 2 Thessalonians 2.13. If you want to turn to 2 Thessalonians 2.13. We'll be going through to 14. But we are bound, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we see belief, and what's that belief in the gospel? And it leads to salvation. It's something that's leading somewhere, with, to leading to God's grace. But I just found that one, found it very interesting. It says belief, and it says to salvation. But let's go to Romans 1.16, if you want to turn there, Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Once again, it's saying you're heading to God's grace by your belief in the gospel. So what does this tell us? Through faith. It takes faith to believe. We found out they, they don't like it. They're going to keep fighting it. It takes faith to repent. We're doing a word study that I'm going to get another video out on here in a little bit about repentance throughout the Bible. Has it ever been a work? Because they're trying to say it's works. Has it ever been um, going from unbelief to belief? No. Okay. Has it ever been just admitting that you're a sinner? No. There's got to be some sorrow there to make it true biblical repentance and repent. Okay. Um, so we see belief through faith. Okay, that's the faith. It's one of the parts of the faith. Okay. Confess. Now we're getting on confess. Romans 10.9. Here's how we find out for this study when I came across it again that God said, Hey, belief and confess go hand in hand. Repent. And I remember the study I, we did together on repent and believe. They go hand in hand. Okay? You can't believe if you didn't repent. You can't confess. Your confession isn't valid if it, you don't believe it. Okay. Let's read this. Romans 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Jesus Christ's righteousness is imputed to us when we get saved. Mm -hmm. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I say it that way because these people just can't seem to get it. Unto means it happens before you get God's grace. Unto salvation. So confession comes before God's grace. 
It's through faith before you can find God's grace. Okay? So remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's that saying is, is your belief is going to come out. And eventually, through this study, I'm going to show you how these false converts are trying to say that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, or Jesus is the Lord. Okay? And yet, they're teaching bad, uh, doctrines of devils. That's because they're confessing. Eventually, out of the buns of the heart, the mouth speaks. Their true heart gets shown what they really confess and what they really believe when they teach these false doctrines that teach Jesus has come in the flesh. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Or Jesus is Lord, and they leave out the singular. Capital L Lord. He becomes a lowercase l Lord by what they teach. Okay, I throw this in here because once you've done all this that leads to God's grace, it's a gift. But the Bible says you're to ask God to save you. That makes it a gift still. Okay, let's read this real quick. Asking God to save you. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay. Um, if I, when I was young, I wasn't... I was kind of good with money as far as saving, but I went through periods in my life that I wasn't good with money. There was a couple times I went to my grandfather and I asked him, I said, you know, I'm almost out of gas. I had a part-time job. I was living out of a little studio apartment. And I went to him and said, Grandpa, I kind of screwed up and I need gas. Can I, can I get some money for gas? And my grandpa was smart. He didn't just give people money. He got in the car with me took me off, I drove to the gas station, he paid for the gas that filled the truck of the car up I had at the time. I have a truck now. Car that I had up at the time. Now let me ask you something. I asked him for help. Now that gas, the money he spent on that gas, did I earn it by asking? Or was it a gift? That's how desperate these people are to justify their flesh, to justify being part of this world, and rejecting the true plan of salvation, going through faith. Okay, It's just a belief in the head to them, and they're saved. They believe in a false Jesus. I used to say that their belief is in vain because it's just in the head and not the heart, but the study we've been doing, brothers and sisters in Christ, no, what it is is they believe in a false Jesus. They don't believe in the real Jesus of Scripture. That's why the belief is in vain. Someone's coming along, and we'll get to that. I don't want to jump ahead, but preaching another Jesus, another gospel, receiving another spirit. So I wanted to go through that before we really get into this, the meat of this study. Okay. You have repentance that leads to belief. Belief leads to confessing, and then there's evidence that all that happened. So you have these people just saying it, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Does that mean they're saved? Uh, that they have the Holy Spirit in them? Okay, they're going to say, well, the verse does. Yeah, but we're going to get to that. Okay, confession, and we read, we kept reading on to show that they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. Okay. What does the world like to hear? Do they like to hear that Jesus is come in the flesh through your teachings, or do they like to believe or be taught that Jesus has come in the flesh? And you can have the world and keep your flesh okay. and live by the flesh. Remember, carnal-minded versus spiritually-minded. Walking after the flesh versus walking after the capital S spirit. So, I put on here sometimes that, remember what we used to say, brothers and sisters of Christ, when someone says, I'm a sinner, and they don't have sorrow for it, they're just stating a fact. They're saying it, but they're just stating a fact. Are they truly confessing it because they truly believe it in their heart? No. Look at the life they live. They, a lot of people reject Jesus Christ because they love their sin. I had someone tell me once that I don't want to get saved. And I asked her, I said, why wouldn't you want to get saved? And she said, because if I, cause I want to live life my way. She flat out said that. She said, I want to live life my way. Yeah. Give me this second. Sliding down a little bit. <laughs> She said, I want to live life my way. Okay? There's people out there that will say, yeah, I'm a sinner. She knew. She's like, I'm a sinner. I do things that are wrong. Okay? I screw up. 
but she wants to live life her way. She loves her sin. And like we've always, like I've taught in the studies I've been teaching, worldly, so we always say repentance is the number, uh, self-righteousness, I'm sorry, self-righteousness is the number one reason people go to hell. Well, I've been learning and studying that worldly sorrow leads to self-righteousness. You don't want to give up your sin, so what do you have to do? Now you have to justify that you're a good person. Well, it's not that big of a deal. I'm a, I'm a good person, because you love your sin. I'm a good person. I'm not as bad as that person. You have to start finding ways to justify your sin. Worldly sorrow leads to self-righteousness every time. Godly sorrow leads to Jesus' righteousness every time. Okay. So, John 8, 44. John chapter 8, 44. If you want to turn there. Can people lie with their tongue, but their heart isn't the same? You know, they're not on the same page. Their heart is not on the same page as their mouth. Okay. Ye, are your, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Satan is the father of lies. Okay? And we're going to get to this next verse. Uh, it talks about ministers of righteousness. His, his ministers are transformed into ministers of righteousness. Okay? He's a father of lies. He likes to take truth and mix lies with it. Okay, someone come out and say, I believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, but then they turn around and teach doctrines of devils that say, that basically teach Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. See, they mix truth with lie, and they're flat out lying to people. And they're getting people to worship the Antichrist, that Antichrist spirit. Okay. 2 Corinthians 11, 1. Okay. 2 Corinthians 11, 1. This is what we've been going through in a lot of our studies, brothers and sisters of Christ. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Now we were reading in Romans chapter 6, I think 1 through 3, where... When you're lost, you're married to a husband, the world, okay? The law of sin and death, okay? You have a husband. Now, that husband, when that husband dies, you're free to marry a, another, a new husband. That old husband has to die so you can be married to Jesus Christ. And this is all spiritually speaking, okay? What's this saying right here, okay? For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you a chaste version of Christ. Why would Paul say this? Because another husband, they're, trying, they're still trying to keep the old husband. He's, the old husband isn't dead. Okay? And we're going to find this out real quick. And they're trying to go to uh, Satan as a false Jesus. But verse uh, 3. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtleties, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Remember the serpent beguiled Eve. What's the serpent? Satan. Okay. For if he that cometh preach another Jesus, whom we have not preached, is that going on in the world today? Or if ye receive another spirit which ye, which ye have not received, Okay. Or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Are, are people receive, uh, preaching another Jesus? Okay. I want to make sure I say that right. Yeah, preach another Jesus. Uh, we see people that have another spirit. Our Holy Spirit isn't bearing witness with the Spirit, Holy Spirit in them because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They have a different spirit. Okay, They're receiving another gospel. Today, are we seeing false gospels left and right being preached? Oh, yeah. So, if you jump down, what's the evidence of this? Jump down to 2 Corinthians 11, 13. Mm -hmm. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers are... 
also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Okay. And we're going to get into this. Okay. Can, people, can the servants of Satan that are posing as Christians, uh, a godly teacher, a godly preacher, uh, you know, I'm, so, I'm a brother, I'm a Christ, I'm a sister in Christ, they can lie. Okay? But how can you tell? How can you see through their lies? By their works. Right? Their end shall be according to their works. And one thing I left out real quick, when we read um, Ephesians, or Corinthians, up above, oh, I put it in the back. <laughs> When we're reading up there about uh, the serpent beguiled Eve, when we get down to the end of 4, it said, Ye might well bear with him. These people that totally reject the real Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ that is come in the flesh, the Jesus that is the Lord, okay, they're going to go to hell with Satan. That's what that's saying. If you keep following another Jesus and you keep that other spirit and you keep receiving another gospel and reject the true gospel, you're going to go to hell where Satan's going to go. Okay? You're going to go to the lake of fire. You're going to be tossed into the lake of fire. Uh, death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. And it talks about how Satan at the end is cast in the lake of fire. Remember, hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. So... Uh, Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrines which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they are such, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Is it, it's not a coincidence, okay, this study about saying the Lord, capital L Lord, and Jesus Christ, which is why I'm redoing this study. The, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. They don't serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. It's all about their flesh. Okay. And they use good words and fair speeches. Oh yeah, I believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. What do they teach? What are they really saying? Okay. Let's start with some of the major doctrines and start going through them and explain why these are a salvation issue. Because if you don't believe these, you're not worshiping the Jesus Christ who is the Lord. The Jesus Christ who is come in the flesh. Godhead versus the Trinity. I know a lot of people don't like this one. The Trinity people. Okay, Why is it so important? I'll just say this real quick and then we'll go through some of the spirits. Okay, the Godhead, when you actually preach and teach the Godhead, you're preaching that Jesus is the Lord. When you teach the Trinity, you're teaching Jesus is a lowercase l Lord. You can say, I believe Jesus is capital L Lord, the Lord. But when you preach and teach the Trinity, you don't believe that. You're truly confessing that Jesus is not the Lord when you teach the Trinity. You are confessing that you don't believe that Jesus is, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You're confessing that Jesus has come in the flesh. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Okay? 1 Corinthians 8, 6. But to us there is but one God, capital G God, the Father of whom are all things and we in him, and one Lord, capital L Lord, Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him. The Trinity teaches that Jesus Christ is not God. There's only one God, the Father. And they keep saying Jesus isn't the Father. So what they're saying is Jesus isn't God. And you can only say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh if you believe that Jesus is God, capital G, God, the Father. And when they take Father out, they believe Jesus is a lowercase g God. Oh no, we don't let you are confessing it by your belief. Your heart, out of the buns of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your true belief comes out. 1 Corinthians 15, 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, why did I quote that? There's two parts there. 
his death, death and burial, and the resurrection. Now let's read what the death means real quick. This is what gets to them. They just can't handle it. Romans 5.10 For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, the death of Jesus Christ, the blood that was shed, is what reconciled us to God. Saved sinners. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life, the resurrection. Why is the resurrection so important? Okay, Because the death of Jesus Christ, it has to be that Jesus Christ is God the Father. If Jesus Christ isn't God, His blood can do nothing for you. My blood can do nothing for you. Okay, He is God the Father, or His death didn't mean anything. And Him being raised from the dead, let's get to this next verse real quick. Okay, Romans 4.24 for for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Remember, the Bible says, feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. Talking about God the Father. It's God the Father's blood that was shed on the cross. It has to be. Why? Because if it wasn't, then you're saying Jesus isn't God. You're saying Jesus is not the Lord. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, not is come in the flesh. Okay? Why is it so important that we believe that Jesus Christ is God the Father? There's only but one God, the Father. If thou believest there's one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? There's only one God. There is no God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's only one God, the Father. If you don't believe Jesus is the Father, you're saying He's not God, and you're confessing it by what you stand for. Oh, I don't believe Jesus is the Father. Then you are saying that Jesus has come in the flesh. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. You're saying that Jesus is just a lowercase l Lord when you reject that Jesus Christ is not God the Father. You're saying He's not God. Okay? So raised him up from the dead. Why is that so important? Because Jesus came up from the dead. The Godhead raised Jesus from the dead, proving that Jesus is God fully and completely, and that it was God's blood that was shed on Calvary. I did a study on this, but we'll go through the verses real quick. Um, why is the Godhead important for salvation? God raised Jesus up. Well, let's start with Jesus. Jesus raised himself. People don't like this verse. Jesus raised himself, the Trinity people. John 2.19, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And I forgot to put the next verse where it talks about he's talking about his body. Not the building, but the temple of his body. Okay. Jesus said he'll raise himself up. Jesus raised himself from the dead on the third day. God raised Jesus up. Galatians 1.1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. God the Father raised Jesus from the dead? Oh, yes. Okay. Holy Spirit raised Jesus up. 1 Peter 3.18 For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. You believe Jesus has come in the flesh if you don't believe that Jesus is God the Father. Why is it a salvation issue? When someone sits there and they preach the Trinity, they've been told the truth. They've been told, hey, you keep saying God in three persons. Let me show you. Person in the Bible, we're doing a person word study we're trying to get through also. Body, soul, and spirit. A person, to be called a person, has to have a body, a soul, and they have to be living. Spirit. So we look at him and say, hey, it's not God in three persons. Okay? It's Jesus is the only person of the Godhead. It's not God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's just God the Father. Jesus is God the Father. And you're turning him into a lowercase g when you say God the Son. Nowhere in Scripture does it say God the Son. Nowhere in Scripture does it say God the Holy Spirit or God the Holy Ghost. It only says God the Father. 
Now, can God be a reference to Jesus Christ? Absolutely. Why? Because Jesus is God the Father. He's God fully and completely. Not a third of God, not the second member of the Godhead. But what's going on here? When you have these false teachers that are teaching the Trinity hardcore, reject the Godhead, they can say, well, they're the same. We've proven they're not the same. They stand for the Trinity hardcore. What are they saying and confessing with their mouth? They're confessing that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. They're confessing that Jesus is Lord. Not the Lord, Lord, lowercase l. Okay? Can they lie and say, I believe Jesus Christ is the Lord? Absolutely. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay. What do they teach? Do they teach Jesus Christ is the Lord? Do they teach Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? No. Now, next one. Eternal security versus you can lose your salvation. We're not just hitting the Trinity people. We're hitting those that believe that you can earn salvation or that you have to do good works to stay in a state of grace or you'll lose your salvation. You can lose your salvation then you can get it back my legs are hurting a little bit. So, try to go up a little bit further. So, 1 John 5.13. These things have I written unto you. 1 John 5.13 if you want to turn there. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Okay. We know in the Bible it's our final authority and on matters of faith and practice okay that you can know you have eternal life the Bible says you're sealed into the day of redemption here's the next verse Ephesians 4:30 I jumped ahead Ephesians 4:30 mm -hmm. and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption okay and this is where we get back to it Acts 20:28 20, we've said this for the Trinity. Um, it was God's blood that was shed on the cross. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. When you try to put in works, you have to do something to earn it or you have to do something to stay in a state of grace. What you're saying is you can lose it. You're saying God's blood isn't enough and it goes back to the Godhead. You're saying that God the Father didn't die on the cross. Jesus is not God. His blood's not enough. Therefore, he has come in the flesh. Therefore, he is Lord, a lowercase Lord. I had a brother in Christ bring, uh, make a point that um, Sarah called Abraham lowercase l Lord. That's why during that correction, when they were correcting me, it is important. Words have meaning. The Lord, capital L Lord, is singular. Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Lord, capital L, of Lord's lowercase l, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If you believe you can lose your salvation, then you, and you can try to say, I believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, you preach that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, and that's what you really believe. And you're confessing it when you teach that you can lose your salvation. And this dispensation, because I know the enemies of God's ministry the faith alone crowd will say that because um, we believe that uh, the time of Jacob's trouble and we'll get to one of the, the next dispensation is post-trib, mid-trib versus pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ during the time of Jacob's trouble that seven year period you can lose your salvation it teaches that but today from the death of Jesus Christ remember that's when we were reconciled to Jesus Christ by the death of his son and his resurrection Okay, from the death of the Son, uh, um, the New Testament comes in at the death of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's back in the Hebrews. Okay? The death of the testator. Okay? The New Testament is without the testament is without force while the testator liveth. The death of the testator. Jesus Christ's death, clear to the catching away of the body of Christ, that's this dispensation. If you teach you can lose your salvation, you do not, you're confessing. You're teaching that you can lose your salvation. You're confessing that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. You're confessing that Jesus is Lord, not the Lord, is Lord, lowercase l. 
You're saying basically Jesus isn't God. His blood's not good enough because he's not God. Okay. Do these people teach that? Okay. If you teach eternal security, you're saying, and here's the thing when we get through here, they need to be on with all of this. If they're off on one of these, they're going to slowly start going off on others. We've seen it time and time with Brother Brian's ministries, people who stood for all this, and then people that are turning their back on it. Right. Pre-time at Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ. Right. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Why I say that? Because if you believe you're going into the time of Jacob's trouble, God's going to be pouring his wrath out on his own body. Uh, no, he's not. The church is not going into the time of Jacob's trouble. Ephesians 5, 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Okay. Jesus is not going to pour his wrath out on his own body. Jesus' righteousness is imputed to us. We are now in Christ Jesus. Now, one of the things is, is uh, I'll link a video Brother Brian did called um, The False God of Post-Trib. False God? In other words, they preach a Jesus that has come in the flesh? Jesus that's a Jesus Christ that has come in the flesh? Or Jesus that's a lowercase l? They don't believe he's actually God? Because you got to go through a final time. The church has to go through a final time of purification. A time period where you can lose your salvation. It goes back to the other one. They're not teaching eternal security. They can say it all they want. But if they teach the church goes into the time of Jacob's trouble, they're teaching that you can lose your salvation. Because you can in the time of Jacob's trouble. But the church isn't going through it. And what I mean by the church, because sometimes church can mean just a called out assembly, what I mean by church is the body of Christ. And in that study, uh, he teaches that God will not pour out his wrath, pour his wrath out on the righteous along with the wicked. God won't do that. So if we go through the time of Jacob's trouble, God's righteousness is imputed to us, and God's going to be an unjust God and pour out his wrath on the righteous along with the wicked. You don't worship the same God as this book, the King James Bible. You have all these fakes and frauds that hold this book, but they don't truly believe in it. And you can tell by their teachings. Mm -hmm. So, you pe if you teach, and I know we just touched on it, but Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries has a huge playlist on um, a pre-time of Jacob's trouble, uh, and he totally debunks the post and mid trip. Okay? The Great Tribulation is never a title for that seven year time period. Today, brothers and sisters in Christ, and a lot of you can attest to it, and if you're new, you should be able to attest to it. You're going to have tribulation today. In that seven year period, the Bible says, in that day there shall be great tribulation. But it's not a title. The title for that seven year period is the time of Jacob's trouble. You want to debunk the whole church going through that time period? All you do is say, what's the proper title for that time period? They will never say the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ because then that will prove them wrong. That that seven year time period is when God turns back his focus on Israel. Jacob is another word for Israel. Your name is no longer Jacob, but Israel. Okay. So what are they doing? They're teaching that Jesus has come in the flesh. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. That Jesus is just a lowercase l Lord. And they can deny it all they want. That's what they're doing. They're confessing it by what they're teaching. Out of the buns of the heart, the mouth speaks. They never truly repented. They're lost. Because the whole thing about this um, challenge that Brian did was to show who's lost and who's saved, who's fakes and who's frauds, and who's true. They never repented and believed in the real Jesus Christ that is come in the flesh, the real Jesus that is the Lord, capital L, Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, the true gospel versus the false gospel. We talked about it in depth to show you that repentance, you have to go through repentance to get to belief. You go through belief to get to confess. Okay? And then there's supposed to be evidence. What's their evidence that they believe that Jesus Christ 
is come in the flesh, do they teach the Godhead? No. Then they don't believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That Jesus is the Lord. Do they teach eternal security? No, this guy I've been listening to, he says there's a chance that you can lose your salvation in this dispensation. Or he says you have to do good works to merit salvation. Then he doesn't believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The heart comes out with his teachings. He's lying to you if he says he does, and then he turns around and teaches you can lose your salvation. He's lying to you if he says it, and then turns around and teaches the Trinity. Even after being told the truth, there's people out there that believe the Godhead, but they're using Trinity terms, and they refuse to let it go. And part of me just goes, that's got to be a red flag to me. If they have the Holy Spirit in them, God will break them to drop that pride and get them to say, okay, Capital T Trinity is not a title for God in the Bible. Where did Trinity come from? The Catholic Church coined the name and phrase Trinity. Uh, three persons isn't in the Bible. We need to just use what's in the Bible. Stop adding traditions of men and words of men to the Bible. Okay? And notice I say catching away of the body of Christ. I don't say rapture. Okay? Why? You look up the definition of rapture. That means taken with violence by force. Is that what's going to happen? Oh, God's going to call me. i got to run. You can't get me, Lord. You can't get Don't, don't touch me, Lord. I, 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 and he's got to take you with violence and by force? Is that what's going to happen? I don't use, uh, I don't use uh, rapture. Okay? It's caught up. Something bad's about to happen here, and God catches us because we're going to... Like, as if you're going to fall. Like, we're going to trip, and it's time of Jacob's trouble, and God catches us and says, no, you're not going through that, and he pulls us up. And we're going to be like, praise the Lord, take us up. I look forward to that day, that blessed hope. Uh -huh. Words have meaning. Uh -huh. You need to try to do your best to get some of those vocabulary out of your, uh, some of those words out of your vocabulary when it comes to trying to say the Bible teaches it. So, like I said, the gospel, do they teach the true gospel? Repentance towards God, godly sorrow for sinning against Him, and understanding with your heart that you're on your way to hell and you deserve to go to hell. Lord, I deserve to go to hell. I'm so sorry that I've sinned against you, that my life is the way it is. It's a mess. Lord, what can I do? I'm going to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Lord, I'm so sorry. What do I do? Do they say that there's no repentance? Then they're teaching that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Do they teach the belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross? Jesus who died on the cross is God fully and completely. Well, no, he's, he's a third of God or a second member of God. Then they don't believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That Jesus is the Lord. Do they take prayer out of it? They say that you're not supposed to confess. The Bible tells you that you're supposed to confess. It takes faith to repent, faith to believe, faith to confess both your repentance and belief to the Lord in prayer to show that you're not ashamed. They say you don't even have to ask God to save you. It says through faith. What's the through part? Repentance, belief, confess. It takes faith to do all those. It says unto or to. Are they messing with the gospel and getting you to try to accept a different gospel than what Paul preached? They attack Romans and say Romans really isn't for today. Okay. What are they teaching? They're teaching a different Jesus. A Jesus who is not God. Okay. And then another big thing. The King James Bible versus the Bible perversions. Okay. This is one that's the first thing. When I tell people, they always said, what about this guy? What do you think about this guy? I always hit them up and say, hey, first thing is, what Bible does he use? Well, he uses a Bible perversion. Stay away from him. In those videos, birds are going a little crazy. I will link the Bible version issue to him, and I'll link the gospel, because you're only going to find the true gospel in the King James Bible. So I'll link the Bible version issue and the gospel, and if they keep rejecting it, stay away from them. You have someone that says, oh, well, he uses a King James Bible. I'm like, okay, he uses a King James Bible. In his teachings, does he correct the Bible? 
Does he go outside the Bible to prove his teachings? Stay away from him. He's not a Bible believer. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing I asked him. And the second thing I asked him is, what gospel does he preach? Have you listened to his um, testimony? I always tell brothers and sisters in Christ, your testimony needs to be your lost life, how wicked of a sinner you were, how you became broken, you know, sorrow for sinning against God, repentance, preaching the true gospel. That's your when you're given a testimony, it's your opportunity to preach. We're all given, uh, we're all part of the ministry of reconciliation. You get a chance to preach the gospel when you do a video or when you give your testimony to somebody. Then afterwards, do you tell them about the changed life? Do you tell them how God changed your life and cleaned up your life? That is the best testimony you're ever going to hear. And most often times, almost 100% truly saved. When I asked him that, he said, well, you know, um, there's a guy, Robert Breaker, that's supposed to be this great King James Bible teacher. And you talk to him and you listen to his testimony, oh, it's just only believe. I just believed and I'm saved. He skips so much. Why? Because he rejects repentance. He rejects prayer. Confessing both in prayer and asking God to save you. Okay. He's not saved. That's not a testimony of someone who's saved. Okay. And I've come across a lot of people's testimonies that are like that. Well, you know, I just, I just believe in Jesus Christ. I, have, I believe in the blood atonement. I plead the blood. You know, I'm trusting the blood. Peter Ruckman, they said it a lot, trust in the blood, but Peter Ruckman taught repentance and belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ. He taught prayer. You confess both in prayer. Ask God to save you. But you got these people that take a lot of that out and just trust the blood. That's all you have to do. Okay. So I'll tell them that. Those are the first two things. Then, uh, most often times, the rest of it, they don't teach, they don't truly believe in the King James Bible. Like I said, they go... They keep correcting it or going outside of it. Because you have to go outside of it to prove mid and post-trib. You have to go outside of it to prove the Trinity. You have to go outside the Bible and chop it up and correct the Bible to prove you can lose your salvation in this dispensation. Okay? So, King James Bible versus the Bible, Bible for versions. This should be a given. You know, If you keep standing for the Bible for versions, they don't say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? 1 John 4, 1 through 3 in the NIV. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world, this is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. So when we read the King James Bible and says Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, this is what they're going to say. Verse 3, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. Not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. So if we don't confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, we're part of the Antichrist spirit. King James Bible says Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. So if you have an NIV and you're watching this, you have an Antichrist spirit book. It's a satanic book. And it also can be traced back to the Vatican. It's a Catholic Bible. The NASB, 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is, of God, is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist of which you have heard that is coming and now is already in the world. Once again, if you don't confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, you're not saved according to these Bible perversions. And that's preaching a Jesus that isn't God. Is come in the flesh. Is. At any time you can say is. Remember the Bible says what he said before Abraham was, I am. Who... Where were you in the past? I am. Present? I am. Future? I am. Same thing with is in the flesh. Where were you in the past? Is, is in the flesh. Present? Is in the flesh. Future? 
is in the flesh. No matter what timeline you're on in history, is in the flesh means you exist. Jesus was there at the very beginning. Uh, John 1, chapter 1, in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with, and in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Capital W Word is Jesus Christ, the manifest Word. He's there from the beginning all the way to the end. Alpha and Omega. That's what the importance is on saying is come in the flesh, not has. Okay? I'll read the message, but it's kind of hard sometimes to follow the message because it is so... I think the whole point of it is to confuse people. When I went to Bible college, when I was lost, false convert, they forced us to buy the message. First mm -hmm. John 4.1 My dear friends, my dear friends, don't believe everything you hear. Mm -hmm. Carefully weigh and examine what people tell you. Not everyone who walks about God comes from God. Walks about God? There are a lot of lying preachers loose in the world. Here's how you test for the genuine spirit of God. Everyone who confesses openly his faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came who came as an actual flesh and blood person, you know, came in the flesh, who has, let's see, Jesus Christ is in the, uh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh versus has come in the flesh, that's what this is saying. Comes from God and belongs to God, and everyone who refuses to confess faith in Christ, Jesus has nothing in common with God. This is the spirit of Antichrist that you hear, heard was coming. Well, here it, here it is, sooner than we thought. Basically, what this is saying is, remember we did a study that there's over half the world that believes in a Jesus Christ. A Jesus. And they're confessing their faith in Him. According to this, they're saved. Every single one of them. That's satanic. So the Bible version issue, that determines whether they believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh or has come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord or a Lord. Or Jesus is Lord, just a lowercase l Lord, just like anyone else. Okay, so hopefully for this uh, study, like I said, I redid it. I had brothers convict me. I had the Holy Spirit convict me. It was so important that I redid this study. So I said the words right because I didn't want to offend God first. I didn't want to do wrong by my brothers and sisters in Christ second. So a brother sent to me and asked, can someone say it and still and teach all these false doctrines? Yes, someone can lie to you and say, I believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. They teach falsely on any one of these major doctrines. They're confessing that Jesus has come in the flesh. Okay? People can lie. So that challenge Brother Brian did, I keep telling people, I told people in the comments, listen. Who cares what the lost people are doing? Yes, we're supposed to warn the brethren about false converts, wolves in sheep's clothing. But the videos are supposed to be for saved sinners. And I believe they are, and Brian would agree, there are. They're for saved sinners. To let us know, what, you know what's true, what's false. First person I started talking to, talked to the Lord, but the first conviction came here. Am I saying it right? Am I doing it right? Is this what I believe? You go down through all the major doctrines. Am I believing that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? Okay, I believe the Godhead. That's Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Uh, I believe in eternal security. That's Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. I believe in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ. That's Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. I have a King James Bible that teaches... Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, and I believe this is God's perfect written word. I believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. I'm saved. I believe in the true gospel. I almost left that out. The true gospel. Am I believing in the true gospel that preaches and teaches that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? Or am I believing a false gospel? No, I believe the real gospel. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess them both in prayer and ask God to save you. I've done those things. I believe in it. The Bible talks about obeying the gospel, standing for it, saying, this is the gospel, I'm not backing down. Yep, I believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You believe all those major doctrines I just said, this, the true doctrines, 
then you believe Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. So I just want to throw that out here. So we're going to get back to some of our other studies that we've been doing. Uh, I'm waiting on the uh, chalkboard to come in so I can continue our study on um, can a Christian be carnally minded? Okay. So I'm going to do a couple word studies, and I will see you in the next studies. Thank you again, brothers in Christ, that were correcting me. Thank you. Correction is good. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and my love for you in Christ Jesus.